Welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today we're going to take a look at configuring the cheapest sound card I could get my hands on. Stick around and we'll get right to it. So a couple of quick things before we get started. First, I got to give a shout out to Dan. He's my latest patron over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. And one other thing, I got to give a shout out to Julian, OH8STN. Julian runs a fantastic YouTube channel and is constantly challenging the way we think about uh, digital communications when we're portable. And it was one of his recent videos, uh, I believe it was the Ultimate Pie Build video, I can't remember which one because I've watched a couple of them, where he chose one of these little inexpensive USB sound cards, I think they cost like six or seven bucks, and then paired that with a cable that he got off of eBay. Uh, now this is the one I chose because it's uh, for the Yezu radio. But he paired these together and did away with uh, his regular sound card device. I can't remember the, the Mini Pro C, I believe, is the one he used. Uh, but it's very similar to the Signalink, but he did away with it. And I thought that was really fascinating. So I was curious if it would work for me. Because the one thing I do that I don't think Julian messes with a whole lot is I like to use Packet for interacting, uh, especially with WinLink. So I needed to know that I could get this working with my setup. So let's take a look today and see just how difficult it was to get uh, this setup on my system and configured. And hopefully it'll kind of point you guys in the right direction. Before I leave this page here, uh, the seller over on eBay, guys, I got no affiliation with this guy, but great customer service. And I sent him a quick message, said, hey, I want to get a one-foot version instead of a three-foot. He said, no problem. Shipped it out the next day. So Hamdapter is the name of, uh, of his uh, eBay site. And like I said, fantastic to work with. So highly recommend that guy. Okay, so the first thing we're going to take a look at is JS8 Call. Now, all I've done right now is I've pulled my signal link out of the... Uh, out of the Raspberry Pi and uh, out of the radio, and I plugged up this USB sound card to the Pi, plugged it uh, into the back of the radio, and then rebooted everything. That's as far as I've gotten. So let's go through and see what this is going to look like. Uh, so let's do JS8 call first. So come up to File and Settings. Under the Audio, let's click the Input. And right here, USB plug and play sound device. Now you'll notice there's two of them. Don't grab this one, it's got monitor out here on the end. I'm not sure why, but that one doesn't want to work for us. Uh, under the output, I'm going to select this same thing USB plug and play sound device. Uh, one other thing we have to change here is under the radio. Now for rig control, and guys, I should have mentioned this in the beginning, you have to be running rig control in order for this to work. There is no Vox circuit built into uh, this particular sound card. So if you're not running rig control, this may not be the route that you should take. Uh, but here you can see that I run everything through FL rig. Uh, so JS8 call sends its commands to FL rig, and FL rig sends it on out to the radio in this particular case. Uh, so the PTT method that I'm going to use is going to be cat control here. So let's go ahead and click OK. Now one other quick thing to note while we're waiting on the waterfall to start up. Uh, I have always used USB and digital for my mode on my rig kind of interchangeably. With this particular setup, I cannot get it to transmit out power, uh, transmit out unless I'm in digi mode, uh, or digital mode, rather. So if I put it in USB, I can get it to, uh, I can get the radio to PTT, but I cannot get uh, actual audio flowing through the radio. But as you can see, we've already got uh, some decodes coming through. 
So let's go ahead and send a heartbeat out and see if we have power and PTT coming from the radio. All right, you can see with the red light, it indicates that we do have uh, PTT and you can see the power meter right there on the very left hand side of the display screen. So we do have power coming out. So we've got JS8 call up and running. That one was fairly simple. Okay, so I'm going to shut down JS8. Now, the next thing I wanted to do was get RDOP running so that I could use Pat Winlink uh, over HF. First thing you'll need to do if you want to do this is open up your Pat configure file. And we're going to scroll down to the RDOP section. And I'm going to look for this line right here, this PTT underscore CTL. Now, I've never had to worry about PTT control uh, with RDOP in the past because it was over Vox. Uh, but that's not the case with this one. So we're going to change that false to true. And then I'm going to exit and save out of that. Now, since uh, I've got Pat running in the background, we do need to um, stop Pat and then reload Pat. So sudo kill all Pat will stop it and then system uh, sudo system ctl start pat at and i'm gonna put my call sign you put your linux username right here so if you're still pi it'll be pat at pi in my case you can see my username right here is uh, my call sign so i'm going to use pat at km4 ack and that got pat restarted so let's go ahead and I'm going to use my new Pat menu system. If you haven't seen the video to this and you're running uh, Pat Winlink, you might want to check this out on the channel. So I'm going to start that up and I'm just going to go ahead and click number two to start the RDOP setup. It takes it just a couple of seconds to start. So I'm going to choose action and connect. And let's pick a station, how about K0SI? We'll go ahead and click the connect button and let's watch the radio. Make sure that we've got PTT control and that we've got power coming out. Looks like the power is a little high on that. So I am gonna go ahead and stop that connection until I can get the card dialed in a little bit. We just need to reduce the volume, uh, output volume of the card and that'll reduce the power output on the radio. So getting RDOP working uh, with this new sound card setup is pretty uh, easy as well. All right, so the last thing I wanted to do was I wanted to get packet working with this setup. This proved to be a much bigger challenge than I had anticipated. Uh, of course, the first two things I did was JS8 and then RDOP. Both of those uh, were pretty straightforward to figure out. I cannot say the same thing about packet. I uh, had to figure out what was controlling the PTT. I looked in the pack configure file. I didn't see anything for PTT under AX25. So where's, where's it getting that control from? Well, I got to digging around in the direwolf comp file. So I'm going to just go ahead and pull this up. We need to look actually look at a couple of things. And guys, uh, try to just follow along with a bouncing ball because this can get a bit confusing until you get your head wrapped around it. Inside of Direwolf, I'm going to scroll down until I find the PTT section. Okay, now you will probably have something very similar to this here under the PTT section. Uh, this has to do with PTT over serial connections. That's not what we're using in this particular case, or at least not how I configured it. This is my PTT statement here. So we define it with PTT and then RIG2, followed by localhost 4532. Now you're probably wondering where I came up with this information. Let's go back to a terminal window and I'm going to type RIGCTL-L. That will list out all of the rigs that uh, work with rig control. And I'm going to pipe that through the more command. 
And the only reason I piped it through more is just so it wouldn't scroll off of the screen on us. Right here, rig number two is for rig control. So basically, I'm going to pipe the Direwolf PTT into the rig control daemon. And then the rig control daemon is going to send that command onto the radio. I couldn't figure out how to get it straight to the radio out of Direwolf. So this was, uh, this was my workaround, or maybe it's the only way to do it. I'm not sure, but it works. I can tell you that. All right, so back to Direwolf real quick. So we send it to Rig2 because that's our uh, rig number out of rig control and the local host 4532. That's the port number that we're going to use. So that defines PTT inside of Direwolf. So I'm just going to close that out. And the next thing I want to look at is my rig control statement. Now, since I'm using my PAT menu system, I'm defining rig control inside of the config file under PAT menu. You could enter this at the command line as well if, uh, if you want to run this manually. But here is my rig control statement. In the past, this is what I have used here. I just needed to define uh, the model number of the radio, where the cable is located, and the serial speed. What's different in this one is this statement over here. This says PTT is going to go out over USB 0, which you notice is the same as the, uh, as the file name here. And this says uh, the capital P and then rig says we're going to use cat control over this device. The way this works is direwolf fires off the PTT command, sends it to the rig control daemon, and then the rig control daemon actually sends it over to the radio. Uh, so, like I said, it took me a little while to figure that out, but it is working. So let's go ahead and run a quick packet connection. Uh, so I don't have any modems running right now, so let's go ahead and start the packet modem. So it takes just a couple of seconds for Direwolf, AX25, and the rig control stuff to all get going in the background. Once that finishes up, you'll see the Tapat mailbox opens. I'm going to go ahead and click Action and Connect, and I'm going to pick one of my uh, local packet gateways. Go ahead and click the Connect button, and it's moved the radio to 145.050, and you can see that the PTT is working on the radio. So it'll go ahead and uh, make that connection and be finished up here in just a second. So guys, there's a look at the way I configured uh, this USB sound card for my setup. Like I said, JS8 was super simple. Uh, RDOP was eh, maybe a touch more complicated, but not too bad. Uh, but Direwolf was the tricky one for me. So maybe you can use some of the things you've seen in this video to help you with your setup should you decide to go with one of these little USB sound cards. And again, got to give a thanks to Julian for constantly challenging our thinking on this. I uh, wasn't quite sure I was going to be able to pull this off with the packet connection, but I, once I got that figured out, this might be the new sound card we're using. All right, guys, we will see you on the next video. Until then... 7-3.